people. This is for my people. What is up, y'all? Happy Tuesday. I'm excited to teach you the easiest way to market in 2022 on social media. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? I think we need some air horn up in here. Where's my air horn? Here we go. Here we go. Let's freaking go. Y'all, I want to pull up these comments. Say hello to me in the comments as you are tuning in. Emily, so good to see you. Who else? Who else is in the house? My goodness, y'all, it is, it's a great Tuesday. You want to know why it's a great Tuesday? Part of the reason is because I decided it's a great Tuesday. But the other reason is I did a sunrise paddleboard this morning and it was literally so much fun. So much fun. Like getting to go out there at 6, 8, woke up at 5, go out there at 6, got my paddleboard, like went to a new spot. There were all these like sand ticks, sand flies, whatever it is. Um, but it was so cool getting to see, we got to see an alligator, which was kind of scary. Thankfully it was like far enough away. Um, we got to see a dolphin, like came up to my paddleboard and I was like, wow, this is incredible. And now I can teach you about the easiest way to market on social media y'all. And if you are just now joining and you're watching the replay, stay till the end. For those who stay till the end, I have a gift for you. I have a gift if you decide to stay. So as you're jumping on, let me know who's here. I see Renee, Tirza, hello, Trina. You're wearing my favorite non-leather earrings. Yo, these are actually heavy. Everybody asks me, they're like, are these heavy? These are heavy, heavy. My leather earrings are not heavy. My leather earrings are very light. They're easy to wear. Like I forget that I'm wearing them. These are all beads. So these are kind of heavy to wear, but I like them. I like him. Um, Emily, thank you so much for joining. I'm so happy to hear that. Um, this is, this is a, I don't think I've actually taught this publicly yet. I've taught this for DNA. This is in social media by design, but I've never taught this publicly yet. So if there's anybody who you believe needs to hear this, you believe needs to be in the group, y'all go ahead and invite them in, invite them into the group, tag them in this, be like, Hey, you want to learn the easiest way to market on social media? It's like, spoiler alert, it's stories, stories. Um, I'm going to give you a download too. Danielle, so good to see you, beautiful. Trina says, these earrings show your level of commitment. You are right. They do show my level of commitment. I got to show up. Like, I got, I'm here. I'm here for y'all. I have a couple of illustrations today as well that I'm going to pull out. But the whole reason why I was sharing about that sunrise is because I was sharing about the fact that like that was a win. It was amazing. It was super fun. And I wanted to hear y'all's wins. So like, tell me like a win from today. Tell me something good. I want to be able to hear Heather, girlfriend. It is so good to see you. Oh my goodness. My beautiful mom is in here. Rebecca. So good to see you. Um, let's see who else I have Kelly in here. Kelly, thank you so much for sharing it with a friend. I appreciate it. I just want to make sure I'm like, there's nobody who's like waiting to get let in. Right. Right. No. Trina says she got her garage organized. Um, Angela. Oh my goodness. So good to see you. Angela. I went where we went paddle boarding. So Angela knows exactly where I went, went for a walk and got into the world today. I love that. I love that. Kathy. So good to see you, girlfriend. All right. It's good. It's good. I have 15 people who are watching live. It is five after. So if you're watching the replay, still comment. Lynn says she graduated last week. Focus on your business. Oh, that is good. Renee is crushing fear. Come on, girlfriend. Heather, thank you for sharing. Jilla, yes. Amazing. Went there for sunrise. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It was amazing. Erica, good to see you. Oh my goodness. I love seeing all of these faces. Y'all, I love teaching. Like it's one of my favorite things to do is to teach. And especially over this topic, because actually right now, five years ago, I started learning this topic. And so I love teaching this, but I really love saying hi to y'all and like getting to connect and say hello. Oh my gosh. It's one of my favorite things. Okay. So I know that if I keep looking at the chat, then like, I'm never going to get through the material that I've actually prepared to get through. 
And so I'm going to go ahead and, um, mom, you're writing a fiction book? What? And you wrote 5,400. Does anybody else go live and like find things out about like their family and friends that they like didn't know about? Just me? Does this just the me problem? I think this may just be a me problem. Let me know if anybody else is here. Um, but all that to say, I'm going to come back to the chat because these are fire and um, I still want to hear. So still put your wins in the chat. I am going to exit out though, because you're here for a specific reason. Okay. Okay. Sound good. All right. First of all, you all, I'm so excited that you're here. I am so excited that you decided to make time for this because you know, the aspect of like people who show up and like they pay attention, like they're the ones who like get ahead. That's not actually a saying, but it's true. The people who are willing to show up the people who are willing to be in the trenches, people who are willing to get the information are the ones who see the biggest acceleration. And I know that with you, I know that you are one of those people who's ready to show up because you don't actually want to stay in the position that you were in, right? So I have this little illustration and I want to see if anybody, oh, that was loud. I want to see if anybody can relate to this. So when you think about your business, like at this point, you probably know that like social media is like the best way to market your business, right? Because like, I'm gonna throw some shade. I'm gonna throw some shade right now. Like emails, they're amazing. They're great for nurturing, but like you got to get people on your email list somehow. Like YouTube is awesome, but it's saturated. Podcasts, it's awesome, but like you got to get people to your podcast. Social media right now in 2022, June, is the best way to grow your business because it's easy. You don't need a landing page. You can literally just talk to people, get to them on the DMs, and then you can build your business. But does anybody else, does anybody else feel like they're kind of getting like beat up by social media? It's like, oh, like, okay, like, yeah, I'm ready. I'm in my position. I like post and I'm like, bam, no comments. And then it's like, okay, like I'm going back. I'm going to DM somebody. Like, all right, I'm ready. I'm creating friendships. I'm growing. I'm building a best friend. And then like uppercut, you get left on red. And then it's like, all right, like I'm trying again. Like I'm gonna go live. Like I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna share with people. And it's like, I'm ready. I got my, I'm ready to, I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to fight. And then it's like cross hook. I don't know the names of all of them. All right. Like nobody shows up to the live. Feel like you're literally getting beat up on social media. I know this is a lot of patterns right now. But like, that's probably how your head feels too. It's just chaos. It's like, why are all of these colors together? Literally getting beat up every single time I go on social media. Does anybody feel like that? Does anybody feel like, what the heck am I doing here? Like, why is this? Why is this not working? Like everybody says that it's supposed to work. Why did I not go from zero to 10,000 in like two minutes? Yo, I wanted to get out my, my actual boxing gloves. I want to get out my boxing gloves to be able to get this illustration of like, first of all, you're not the only one. You are not the only one. And second of all, nobody actually makes it from zero to 10,000 just like that. Nobody actually makes it of just like, all of a sudden they have like a hundred likes. 200 comments on all of their posts overnight. So the aspect of it, it's getting a little bit better. You're showing up for your community a little bit more. You're talking to a couple more people. You're being able to share. You get, instead of one like, you get 12. Instead of one comment, you get two. And you're celebrating that because you understand the power of community. You understand the power that you are not just in this to be able to serve yourself. You know that you are in this to be able to serve other people. And so instead of you just feeling like you're getting knocked out, you're coming alongside somebody else. And you're like, hey, let me show you. This is actually how you throw a right hook. Hey, this is actually what an uppercut looks like. Hey, this is actually what a jab looks like. Because it's in community. It's helping other people. It's being able to serve them. And it's knowing that as you do the work, as you talk to more people, more people are going to show up, more people are going to see it. And it's that little by little by little. Okay. So I hope that we're on the same page with this. I hope that you believe that it's done a little by little. And I hope you also believe that in that little by little, it's not just like all of a sudden, like it's overnight and like things just happen, but like you get to do the work. 
you get to do the work. It gets to be fun. It gets to be fun to be able to show up live, like with your boxing glove. Like if somebody told me five years ago that I would get to show up live and talk to my friends with boxing gloves and I could have an air horn and wear all of the colors that I wanted to, then I'd be like, sign me up because that's what's fun to me. But you get to show up, you get to do the work and what works for you, okay? Yo, this was not at all what I had planned, but I think that somebody needed to hear it. Let me know in the chat if it was you who needed to hear this and it was you who needed to be reminded of this. Because in the little by little, in the growing, one of the things that you get to do is storytelling. Oh my gosh, storytelling. Storytelling is one of my favorite things to do. And I think it's because my parents actually fostered this in me, in all three of us, but they fostered this aspect of storytelling. And I have this memory of being it, like my parent or my extended family was home, was at our house. It was, I think it was summer break. They had come, my grandma was there, my uncles were there and I was given a mic. It didn't look like this. Oh my goodness, where did it go? It didn't look like this. This isn't what the mic looked like. But I was given a mic and I was told to tell a story. Like, Mary, go ahead, tell everybody a story. And so I got to tell people stories. I loved it. And so five years ago, I started doing done for you social media. It was actually five years ago, like July. So exactly five years ago, I started doing storytelling. And I don't know why they hired a 19 year old to run social media and blogging for this company. But like, thank God that they did. Thank God that he believed in me enough. When I said, I don't know how to do it, but I'll learn. He said, cool, you're hired, that I learned. And I remember it so clearly because I was working with this company teaching um, veterans that like we could help them. Like, hey, there's another way. You don't have to go through the VA. We can help you. We can coach you. We can teach you. Okay. So I've been selling coaching services for five years now. I was doing 10 for you. And I don't know if you know anything about the VA disability process, but it is actual garbage. It is garbage. So I'm sifting through, I'm learning all of this information about PTSD and mental health and about how to file these claims. And I'm posting about it and I'm posting the raw information. If you have this, you need to do this. If you have this, you need to do this. Has anybody else ever just posted like the value, the knowledge, like, hey, if you have this, then you need to do this. That's what I was doing. I was just posting like the knowledge for people. And there was one week where I was like, I have no idea what else to post. I have no clue. I am out of ideas. I was tapped out. I'd already gone through all of the notes that I had. And I started to cry because I was so frustrated that I couldn't figure out what else to tell, what else to say. And I was finally like, all right, whatever. I'm going to go to the CEO's YouTube videos and I'm just going to type one of the stories that he shared. And so I did this and I typed the story and I posted on social media, almost as like a last effort of like, I don't know what else to do. And that post got double the amount of engagement than any of our other posts. Like it got shares, it got likes, got comments, double what all of our other posts had gotten. And I was like, because remember, one of the things that I teach is you gotta be a detective on social media. So we're social media detectives. And I was like, this is interesting. This is really interesting. Why did this work? So I was like, okay, let me try another story. I tried another story. And then that one worked really well. And I was like, wait a second. Is there something here? Is there a reason why this is working? Long story short, I kept still sharing the value, still sharing the information, but almost every single post that I uploaded, I added a story with it. I added a story with it. And our posts kept doubling, kept tripling, and then organically. And then whenever our posts would be do really well, and it was always the story, it was never the information, we'd put ad dollars behind it. And the story in itself would already bring in thousands of dollars of new clients. And then we would put ad dollars behind it and it would like blow up. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. We'd get comments, people saying, oh my gosh, this is me. 
How are you in my head? How did you know that this is what I'm struggling with? Can you imagine getting those comments from people of being like, this is exactly what I needed. How did you know this is what I needed to hear? That's how we did it, is storytelling. And I'm about to show you how to do it for yourself. And what I'm actually gonna do today is I'm going to teach you how to do it, to teach you how to find stories. I'm gonna teach you how to do it. I'm gonna give you a preview of editing your own stories. And for the people who can clearly, when I'm ready for it, not right now, who can clearly tell me what the services that they offer and one thing that they've done today, I am going to verbally, I'll write a post for you. Because one of the objections that I get is like, my life's boring. I don't know what to tell stories about. Y'all, I've told stories about groceries. I told stories about my air vent being open. And I've told stories about friends. Like I can literally show you how to tell stories about all of those things and relate them to your business. So if you're ready, if you're here, if you're willing to learn and actually take notes, then I want you to tell me in the chat. I want you to say, I'm ready. I'm here. I'm ready. You know, maybe you want to mix it up a little bit. Say like, hola, different language, whatever it is. Tell me if you're ready. Because you know that those people who are like leaned in in their seat, and they're like, okay, Mary, I have my notes. I'm ready. I got my notebook. I have my notes. I'm ready to listen. I'm ready to figure out, get a little bit of nugget. They're ready to get a nugget. Those are the people that are going to see the best results from this training. Because anybody else always have the best intentions of like going back to trainings and like rewatching them. But then like life gets in the way, kids get in the way, and you never actually end up going back and listening to them. Is that just me? Maybe it's just me. That's fine. All right but I want you to be leaned in. I want you to know that the people who are leaned in, who take notes, who look for the nuggets that I'm going to share today and then actually implement it are going to see results in their stories. They're going to see more people wanting to work with them. They're going to see more connections. They're going to see how it's not the fact that nobody wants to hear what it is that you're sharing. You just haven't shared it in the way that people are ready to listen. Did anybody else catch that? Everybody wants to hear what you have. It's not the fact that there is something about your story or your message or any of that that people don't want. People want what you have. You just get to test it a little bit more to see how you can share those things, okay? So I'm gonna share a couple disclaimers as I get started. First one, this takes work. You're not gonna learn this information and then automatically it's gonna be there. It does take work. If that's a like no-go for you, then like, I love you. I'll see you later. Goodbye. It does take work. I'm going to make it as easy as possible. And even in what I give you in this download, if you stay till the end, even in the work that I give you, you will not have to go through this checklist every single time. When I shared this with DNA members a couple of weeks ago, um, I got asked like, Mary, do you go through this checklist every time? And I said, no, at this point it's automatic. But just like riding a bike, like I don't have to think about riding a bike. I don't have to think about swimming. I fell off my paddleboard today. I didn't have to consciously think about swimming and like staying afloat. I just knew how to do it, but it took effort at first. It's going to take effort. That's okay. It won't forever. Okay. The second thing is, as I already said, if you don't do the work, it's not going to work. I don't, I would hate to get a message from me being like, Mary, like, I don't know what happened. It didn't work. And then be like, well, did you try it? Like, did we keep testing it? Did we try new things? Did you talk to people? No. Okay, cool. That's why. All right. The third thing is you need to know the vision and who you're speaking to. So if you haven't already done this, make time, schedule time in your calendar right now. Take out your phone, which you to literally take out your phone and schedule time that you are going to talk face to face to people and figure out what their actual problems are. You see, if you're using the term loafers, because you literally think that people need, are looking for loafers, they want loafers, they're like, I just need to find loafers. If you think, and you're using the term loafers in your social media copy, but actually people are saying boat shoes, y'all could be talking about the same thing, but you don't realize that you're talking about the same thing. Do you know how do I know this to be true? Because literally DNA, we have a call every Tuesday and Thursday, on our DNA call two hours ago, I had this conversation. One of my clients, she calls them loafers. I call them boat shoes. When I think of loafers, I think of my grandma's shoes. That's what she calls them. She calls them loafers. You need to know the language of your client. If you don't know the language of your client and what they are talking about and what they are needing, then this is going to be a lot harder. Okay. So 
Let me know in the chat too, because I'm going to follow up with you. You want some accountability? Let me know who is committing to talking to their ideal client this week. Put it in the chat. Okay. So as you know, social media is all about creating connections. It's all about creating connections with people. And it gets to be really fun. Like I said, I'm like, I have all of these colors on. I have my air horn. We created a connection. You realize that you are on this call right now because we have some form of a connection. Maybe you like my purple hair. Maybe you think that I share some valuable information. Maybe you just think I'm funny. Any of the above are okay. I'm okay with all of them. All of them are true. I have great hair. I also share some great information. <laughs> But it's because we had a connection. You get to go then and multiply and do the same thing with your groups, okay? And part of the reason is because I share a lot of stories. If you go back and you want evidence of this, go back to my profile and look at all of the stories that I shared and think about it. On my little bubble stories, you know, like little 15 second stories. Um, speaking of which, if you wonder how they don't cut off after every 15 seconds, film on Instagram, auto post to Facebook. It's, I'm always sharing stories and it's because I learned to be a great storyteller. I told you about that time as a child where I had my microphone and I was sharing a story to my family. You see, when I did that, there were a lot of ums and there were a lot of likes and I paused. I didn't really know what I was going to talk about. Now you give me a mic and you tell me to share a story. I'm like, okay, cool. So here's what happened. You know, I was not planning on sharing my paddleboarding story. Some of the stories that I share online, I'm not planning to tell, but it's because I made it second nature. Does anybody else think that you can make it a habit for something to become second nature? Like, do you think it's something you can learn? I do. Okay. So this training is going to be interactive. So I hope that you did go get a pen and paper. And I hope that you are, we're on the same wavelength. We're on the same wavelength. We get to create connections and storytelling is one of the great, best ways to create connections. Now, if you were in the Engagement Accelerator Challenge, which I hosted last August, oh my gosh, that was a year ago. Let me know if you want me to bring that challenge back. I was thinking about it actually, in like September-ish, bring back the Engagement Accelerator Challenge. It was fun, it was really fun. One of the things that I talked about is doing the five by five formula. So essentially it's five things that you do five times every single day. And so it's like adding friends, you're going and commenting, you're DMing people, you're in groups, and you are commenting on other people's posts and you are creating that connection. Now, before we get into storytelling, I want you to know that if you are continually doing this, your posts will do better because it's just how the algorithm works. The Facebook's goal is to keep you on Facebook for as long as possible. So if you are playing the game of Facebook, of Instagram, of TikTok, and engaging on other people's posts, then your posts are going to be seen by more people and they're going to do better. All right. You've probably heard the saying, money comes from people. You got to know how to talk to people. That's the first thing. But I've also talked about before of in this connection aspect of talking to people, how essentially what you're doing is you're building a best friend. Who has heard me talk about build a best friend? So all you're doing on social media, that's how to think about DMs, building a best friend. When you build a best friend, what do you do? I want you, I actually want y'all to comment before I share this. What, like when you're building a best friend, what is it that you're doing? What does that look like? What does that relationship look like for you? When I think about making a best friend, when I think about getting to know people, I'm going to ask them questions. I'm going to be able to see what's going on with you. What are you doing? What's happening? I'm going to find out more about them. I'm going to listen to their stories. I'm not just going to hear them, but I'm going to actively listen. Because as I'm asking them stories, they're probably going to tell, or as I'm asking them questions, they're probably going to tell me stories. Like, for example, how did you get to Florida? Oh, well, you see, I lived in Texas my whole life. And then in 2020, I was supposed to move to Italy, but I didn't really want to be in Italy in 2020. So a friend had an open room because she had just moved to Florida. She offered it to me and I visited and I was like, I love this place. And so I moved August of 2020. I told you a story because you asked me why I moved to Florida. And you're really getting to know somebody. And on the flip side, if you're thinking about it, like those are like really good ways to make a friend. 
right? You'd probably agree. Like you want people to ask you questions, you want to share stories. But if you think about it on the flip side, like what are some characters, characteristics of a dull and boring friend? Somebody who doesn't really interact, they don't ask questions, and they share no stories. Can you imagine if you were to like meet somebody and be like, hey, Sally, how's it going? You're like, fine. They're like, how's your day been? Good. Maybe this is some of your kids. That's actually how they respond. Yeah, like, you know, what did you do today? Nothing. You're like leaning in. You're like, I want to know what's happening. What's going on, Sally? You're like, you know, did your, um, how did you move here? Just decided to be a good idea. And you, maybe you ask them like, Hey, like what's going on with school? Like you're leaning in, you're ready to listen. You're ready to get more information from them. And all they're giving you is dull, lifeless, and boring. Maybe you ask them about science class and it's like, Hey, I know science class is your favorite. Like what's going on? And they just share details. It's not as interesting as like, okay, so I learned today, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. And I learned this because, you know, my teacher, she was talking about like the school bus and how everything's in the school bus and this and this and this. If I can tell a story about it, then like, I'm engaged, you're engaged. Is this connecting for people? I hope that it is. I wanted to give you the contrast of like, even in real life, like a dull, boring person versus like exciting, energetic, uplifting, like what's going on? And I hope that you see the common thread here. The common thread is that stories are important. People want to be able to hear stories. And a lot of times when I share this, people will start to argue with me and they're like, that's not true. People just need the facts. They just need to be able to know what they're going to get, what's going on. And my sassy side would say, how's that working? My non-sassy side is going to actually help you. My non-sassy side would say, let's look at people who've done more in revenue than you or I. I feel like that would be like a good indication that like they've done something well. Okay. So we're going to look for Disney. Love them or hate them right now. Doesn't matter. We're just looking at the numbers and what they've done. Disney, we all know them. They're a household name. As of yesterday, June 27th of 2022, Disney was worth $178 billion. I'm going to say that number again. Disney was worth $178 billion. Can we at least come to the agreement that they have done something in the business world correctly? That they're worth, they're a billion dollar company. Okay. I think that we can at least level that playing field. And let's think about it. How did Walt Disney become successful? Well, first of all, he started telling stories about a mouse. Does anybody else remember those black and white? movies of the Mickey Mouse and what he was doing, what was happening, he told stories about a mouse. He had Disney princesses who told a story. He used other people's stories, animated them, elevated them, and he tells these beautiful stories. My favorite princess growing up was Cinderella. Loved Cinderella. And I think about Cinderella and what happened and her losing her shoe. And the fact that she was, had this like tragedy of like her, horrible stepsisters and the fact that she just had to clean the palace every day and it was awful and then she was able to go to the ball and she was able to get a magic dress that like in the carriage that she just had to be gone by midnight or everything turned back into a pumpkin she turned back into her gown she lost her shoe on the step and she went back for it she met him charming it was amazing all this you have like the plot like the negative it goes up Climax, like, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? Prince Charming comes back, saves her, takes her back to the palace, happily ever after. I have these beautiful stories that they've told that have captivated kids' hearts and they love them. Disney also had people literally basing their life on these movies, on the stories that they told. I just watched High School Musical last week with some of my high school girls. They come over to my house every Tuesday. They're coming over today. It's going to be awesome. And they were like, I literally thought high school was going to be like this. I'm like, girlfriend, me too. I thought that Zach Efron was going to be in my high school. And I was very upset that he was not. People literally based off their life off of these stories because Disney is such a good storyteller. And so our brains think in stories. 
And I said it on one of my posts leading up to this, but coaches, like if you coach people, you work with people's brains for a living. You help them figure out, hey, what's going on? Why are you believing this? What's happening? So you work with people's brains in the sessions, but what about if you worked with people's brains before the sessions in order to get them into coaching with you? And so did you know that when you actually imagine something, when you imagine something to happen, it makes it as real as if it were to actually happen? Because your brain has to figure out, how can I make this happen? How can I figure this out? Because your brain is like a ship. I like to think of it like this. I actually got this illustration from one of my friends, Brandy. And what she explained is like, your brain is like a ship. When you think about it, and like, you are the captain of your ship. And your brain is like a bunch of little shipmates who are like running around, like scrubbing the deck and like pulling the flags and doing other things that you do on a ship. And you say like, hey, I'm going to go make X. And your brain's like, aye, aye, captain. You tell your brain, hey, I'm tired. Your brain goes, aye, aye, captain. Shows you evidence of you, you being tired. But when you tell your brain something, it has to make it happen. So you know this for yourself, but what about if you did it for clients? What about you showed them what was possible? Because when we read stories, we don't think about ourselves being in the story. We don't think about the other person. We put ourselves in the story. I'll give you an example of this. I shared a story a couple months ago about my credit card declining at an acai bowl place. I told the story. It was a great story. And I had, it was over 60. I think it was closer to 100. But I had over 60 people who commented and DM'd me and said, Mary, this is my story. I can relate late. Oh my gosh. Thank you for sharing this. Nobody was thinking about me in this situation. They were thinking about themselves. They were thinking about when they were in a similar situation. They were thinking about when their card declined. So if you're thinking I can't share stories because I'm making it about me. No, you're actually making it about the other person when you tell a story well. Because what I did in that story is I gave you things to think about so that you were actually in the story with me. I talked about how my Apple watch buzzed when I got the text about my credit card declining. I talked about that feeling, the anxiety. When you just tell stories well, you share them so that people want to lean in. They want to be like, oh my gosh, what's she going to share next? I can feel it. I can feel the buzz of my Apple watch. I can feel the anxiety. I can feel the embarrassment of that woman making a joke, trying to make me feel better. I can feel that because you share the story well. You share the story well. That's what you get to do. So Disney did. They just continued to do it over and over and over again. And now they're a $178 billion company. Disney even told stories so well that they told stories about the Disney parks and they had kids believing like, this is a beautiful, this is amazing. Like, you know, this is, it's the most wonderful place, on, magical place on earth, whatever their slogan is. I think it's magical place on earth. When the reality is, have you ever been to Florida, especially in the summer? Y'all, it's raining right now. It's raining. It rains every single day. It's humid. It is hot. There's lines. There's screaming kids. Ice cream's melting. They told you so many stories about Disney and the fact that it's the most magical place on earth that they made summer in Florida sound like the best place ever. And don't get me wrong, summer in Florida is amazing. However, I don't want to be outside all day. I definitely don't want to be outside from 2 to 6 p.m. Absolutely not. Are y'all getting to see more of how a story is an analogy? A story can get people to believe something completely different and they can believe what's possible for them. Like High School Musical, like maybe it's mindset. Maybe you literally become so good at storytelling and you show so many examples of how you and your clients have been able to do things like break out of this cage of anxiety, break out of the belief that I can never do enough. Maybe because you can share stories about how oils have healed you now people can believe, oh, wait, I don't have to deal with de debilitating migraines every day. Oh, wait, I don't have to accept anxiety as my future. Oh, wait, I don't have to accept the fact that like this just is what it is. 
I don't have to accept the fact that um, I'm going to be broke forever. Now I have an opportunity to not be broke. Don't realize that like Disney did it with princesses, but you can do it with people's life and their legacy. That when you tell stories, then people are able to see that, oh, wait, my kid doesn't have to grow up exactly like me. They can grow up better. Oh, wait, my kid doesn't have to grow up like what I'm seeing on social media. And I'm so fearful of because I can get help from this person. You were able to do that for other people. You were able to share stories well, both yours and your clients. And you can share stories that literally change generations. Because I believe that every single person who is on here right now, you are not just doing it for you or your family, but you are doing it because of the legacy that you are changing because of the business that you have. Yes, you are selling oils, but you are not just selling oils. You are selling a vehicle to be able to change things for your family. You are selling a modality so that somebody doesn't have to deal with the stomach pains and the aches and the arthritis and then not ever sleeping anymore so that they can then go and be an amazing mom and wife and sister to their family. Yeah, you're selling mindset coaching, but you're not just selling mindset coaching. You were selling the ability for a mom to be free and be present with her children. And that in itself can go way deeper. So by you mastering the art of storytelling, you are able to show up for other people's legacies and other people to have generational change. So this isn't just about you. This is about your family, your kids, your grandkids, and every single other person who's going to see that, wait, I don't have to sit here stuck. I don't have to just accept my current reality that this just is the way it is. But by you sharing stories, you can slowly, but surely little by little start to break their beliefs, start to build up new beliefs, start to show them that, wait, maybe there is another way. Maybe there is another way. And you can do that through your everyday life because your life is a story. And what we're really doing here when we share about our business, so we create an analogy. So I'm going to actually show you how to do that. And so if you want to participate, then I'm going to need you to actually comment in the group. Okay. I'm going to need you to comment in the group about what your business is. So I need you to share like, hey, what is the service that you offer? What is the thing? Maybe it's like, I sell, if you sell like essential oils or hair care or whatever, I need you to be really specific about who your ideal client is. So if you want to help people with something specific, then I need you to be like really, really specific on this so that I can get through as many as possible. So I want you to share like what the service is that you offer. The second thing that I want you to post is something that you did today. Like my mom writing 5,400 words in a new book that she's writing. Like I'm not over this yet by the way, I'm calling you after like share something so that like, even if it's like, got my kids up, Hey, we were able, like my kids and I went to the park. Okay. Like I just, I need something from your day or from your week. And I'm going to mesh the two together and I'm going to give you a story and don't worry, this is going to be recorded. It'll be in the group till Friday. You can go back and you can watch it. Okay. So I'm pulling up comments so that I can read them. Cool. Um, and I'm going to keep talking, but I'm just, I'm going to keep talking so that I can wait for your comments to come through. All right. So go ahead and comment on what it is that you do and something that you've done this week. Can y'all hear the thunder? We love it. All right, cool. Um, now there's a couple of like little mindset shifts that you're going to need to have for this to work for you, because yes, I'm here right now, but like, I don't create codependent people. Like I want to empower you. I want to be like, here, you have the ability to create wealth. You have the ability to create posts, like go out into the world and create it for yourself. Like it is not helping anybody if you're relying on me to create your stories for you. So I'm going to help you right now, but the ultimate goal is for you to be able to do it for yourself. And there's a couple of mindsets that you need to have in order to be able to go and do it for yourself. The first one is you have to believe that your life is interesting enough to be able to write and talk about. You have to believe this. 
And so I, if you haven't heard this before, my belief is that there's a red carpet rolling out in front of me. Everybody wants to be friends with me. Everybody wants to work with me. Like everything works out in my favor. And so literally take the same mindset and start to use it for yourself of the fact that, Hey, everything works out in your favor. Everything works out for you. Your life is interesting enough to be able to talk to people. It's a simple mindset shift, but it is a huge one. Okay. And I'm also going to show you another example of how I did this. Yesterday, I sent Michaela. I love Michaela. She's amazing. She's hiking Mount Zion right now. Otherwise, she would be on this live. Very excited. I told her the only way that it was okay if she was hiking Mount Zion is if she took lots of pictures and posted them on social media. Um, I got distracted by Mount Zion. What was it? Oh, I sent Michaela this video that I took yesterday because I'm going to post it on social media. And it was a minute and 30 second video and I'm unpacking my groceries. And as I like look into my grocery bag, I realize I did not get anything for a full meal. And so I was like, well, let's turn this into content. So I set up my phone and I'm pulling out my groceries. I was like, do you ever like, like, can we just look at this for a second? I'm pulling out all of these random things. I have dark chocolate chips. I have green onions. I had some beans. And you realize that none of this actually goes together. I can't make a meal out of any of this on its own. And you realize that your social media strategy is the same way. You're trying to do lives. You're trying to do reels. You're trying to do stories, you're trying to show up. People are telling you to tell stories. People are telling you to share value. And you have no idea what to actually post. This is where a social media strategy comes into play. If you want to learn how to do one, then let me know. And don't end up with a social media strategy that looks like my groceries. Like literally you can do this with anything. I'm going to show you. I see some of the comments that are coming through, which is amazing. I'm going to get through as many as possible. So if you're just jumping on, then go ahead and still pop in what it is that you do and something that you did today. Okay. Carly. Amazing. I help coaches and entrepreneurs clarify their zone of genius, nail their unique niche, 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 niche. I think I tried to combine both of the sayings of the word today. I taught my kids Shakespeare for their home ed. Okay, cool. So Carly, how do I want to go about this? I've never done this like this. Um, clarify their zone of genius and nail their unique reach. Okay, so I'd talk about it of Shakespeare. And I would share a story about how I don't know what, I don't know any, I could not name a single, Romeo and Juliet, here we go. Romeo and Juliet. And the fact that when Shakespeare created Romeo and Juliet, he knew exactly what it was that he was doing. He knew exactly what it was. He wanted a tra tragedy. He had a goal in mind. He was ready to entertain viewers. He wanted you to be able to sit down in a theater and be able to watch something that was entertaining. It was exciting. It had a plot twist. Oh my gosh, like they die. I think they die at the end. Didn't listen in English. And so when Shakespeare wrote Romeo and Juliet, he had this idea. And then I would weave in there about the fact that you did this with your kids today and the fact that like y'all acted it out. Like business owners, y'all are trying to essentially create Romeo and Juliet without knowing what the goal is for Romeo and Juliet. That would be like Shakespeare sitting down to write Romeo and Juliet and not knowing what was gonna happen. Like, is Juliet gonna like run away with a NASCAR driver? Is Romeo going to kiss a toad? But when you can nail your niche, when you can know exactly who it is that you're talking to, then you're not showing up with these random ideas, random pieces of value, but the audience that's watching it knows exactly what it is that you are doing and exactly how you can help them to succeed. So tell me in the comments below, do you know what your niche is and are you able to show up confidently online? Okay, so Carly, I would add in at the beginning of that a little bit more about my hook for it. I would probably be like, Today, I started, we acted out Shakespeare with my kids or taught Shakespeare with my kids. And it got me thinking about this for business owners. So I'd have some sort of hook in there and then weave it in. Of course, cut out some of my words, but that's how I do it for those two. All right. Lynn, energy healer. I create guided meditations for people, their pets, for people going through cancer treatment, sewing a pair of shorts today. Okay, cool. So I would talk about the fact that Unfortunately, when somebody is going through a cancer treatment, their body isn't, or I would start with the shorts. So talk about 
as I am, I'm sewing a pair of shorts today. As I'm adding in, I started thinking about the fact that these shorts are only usable. They're only whole when all of the pieces are there. I couldn't just leave one pant leg off and still have a pair of shorts. It would look weird if I didn't have a pocket or whatever. And I started thinking about this with cancer treatments and being able to help because there are so many parts and pieces that are unique to you. Just like with shorts, the pattern for a pair of um, Bermuda shorts looks different than the pattern for a pair of uh, like Daisy Duke shorts. Know what your goal is. And with every single cancer treatment, they're all different. So let's work together. Let's talk about this. Let's be able to figure out what it is that is the best design, the best formula for you. Okay. Heather says, I affiliate for several health and wellness companies. Heather, what was something that you did today? And I'm going to match up the story as well with what it is that you're doing. Kathy um, said, I took care of my husband due to the accident yesterday, pulled out our arsenal of natural living products before leaving for clients. Okay, so I would tell um, a little bit more of what happened with the accident. So let's just say, for example, that he got in a car accident, which if he did, I'm so sorry. I'm assuming that he's okay. And I would literally have the hook as my husband got in a car accident yesterday. He was in a head on collision with somebody else, got T boned. I guess those are two opposite things, whatever. He was in a head on collision and when he got home last night, he had a headache, his body was banged up, he has a couple of bruises, and he's physically sore. We knew that he didn't need to go to the hospital, he didn't need anything like that, but last night when he came home, he did a detox bath, which we added in lavender and rosemary, added valor on the specific bruises, and then we're able to give him whatever for pain. Like even today, and then I would share the result just after last night, the bruises are 50% less. He's not in as much pain and he's able to do this. Be like, I don't know if you like, you could either do it one of two ways. One, you could do it like as an offer post of saying like, I don't know if you'd want to see more about these oils that were able to help heal my husband overnight. Oh, I don't know if you can say that over on social media. If you can't, then I would just say how grateful you are. You don't even need a call to action because when you share really specific results like that, people are like, what are you talking about? Your husband got in a wreck and he is okay. Like his bruises are like 50% less. Like what, how is this possible? So I would just say how grateful you are at the end. Cause I don't think that y'all can share specific results like that. Okay. Do have to go outside and swim with my son, Heather. Okay, Heather, I would talk about, um, I'm not 100% sure if this is your story or not. If this is your story, then this would work. If this isn't your story, then this wouldn't work. But talk about the fact that you, like five years ago, you used to be in intense pain. Like you were in physical body pain every single time you got out of bed. It just started the fact that it hurt to stand up. It hurt to move. You didn't know what the problem was. You tried other diets. You had tried other supplements and you had started using greens, whatever you added in these red products, like a blend of fruits and veggies, whatever. And you were actually able to now, you're about to go to the park with your son and you know, we're going to slide down the slides. We're going to do all the swings. We're going to play tag and talk about how grateful you are. The fact of what you're able to do with your son. Okay. Heather, I like really don't know if this is your story, but the whole aspect of that is share about what you're able to do with your son and the contrast because of these products. Okay. Danielle, I just see your comment saying support. I don't know if you were supporting other people or what that looks like, but Danielle, you have so many stories that you can share with people. 
you could even share some about your childhood and growing up with five siblings, four siblings. I'm like trying to like count in my head with multiple siblings and some of the things that you learned there. You could talk about like what it looks like of moving across country. Well, you move across, moving to a different state with your siblings. I mean, we'll talk about that and the fact that you're grateful and that you can now do pop-ins anywhere in the world, but with your clients who've gone through group coaching. Okay. So let me know in the chat. I don't know if there's not many comments coming through or if my phone isn't picking them up, but, um, Heather, you said we haven't been outside a while because I've been sick a lot lately. Yeah. Talk about that. Talk about the fact that like, Hey, you used to be sick, very grateful and what y'all are going to do. Bring some joy in it too. I think that that's sometimes where people get stuck on stories is they just want to stay in the actual story of it. I'm like, no, like we got to have both. Think about it. Every single good story has like the negative, the down, but then they bring them back up. You have the happily ever after. People like the happily ever after. Okay. And right now we're just teaching the happily ever after strategy. The fact that you talk about the problem, talk about like the climax, like where it went to, and then you talk about the happily ever after. Now I want to know, do you believe, I'm going to pull up my, uh, I'm pulling my comments again. So actually, like, I want you to comment. Do you believe that you can go on and do this for yourself? Do you believe that you can use everyday things and go on and share about it with your business, with what it is that you do, build up support for what it is that you have? Because like I said, if you don't believe that you can do it, then it ain't going to happen. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but if you don't believe that it can happen, it won't happen. So first you need to believe, and I want to know who believes that they can actually do this on their own. The second thing is pay attention to how other people do it. Remember, you're detectives on social media. When you go on social media, when you look at what other people have, you are a detective. You are seeing what they do and what captures your attention. And when I say this, I'm not saying this to say, oh, now you need to go copy exactly what they do. You will not get the results that they got if you copy it. I'm just going to say it. You won't. You will not get the results that somebody else got if you copy exactly what they did. But pay attention to the fundamentals of how they shared. Pay attention to what captured you. Was it the fact that they had a good hook? Was it the fact that you were able to... Like you read all the way down was the fact that the story was entertaining. So the fact that they shared visuals like the Apple watch buzzing or the anxiety in the body, you could feel that you're a detective. Think about how a detective would solve a case. They would be curious. They'd be looking at it from all different angles. They'd be studying, seeing what happened. So pay attention to how other people did it and try it for yourself as well as with detectives. They don't just accept the first answer. Like if they get it wrong, has anybody seen Psych, the TV show? I loved that show. In Psych, even if they got it wrong the first time, they would try other angles. They would try other aspects of it. So even if you try this aspect of storytelling and you get it wrong, try it again. Try it from a different angle. Remember, you're a detective. And how you're really going to take this into action is you're going to start free writing. Now, for those who stay till the end, I have a document for you that's going to give you a couple of examples and it's going to give you some ideas for what to start free writing. But when you free write, I don't want you to think about editing it. This is literally going to kill the creativity from your brain. I want you to just free write and just write. You see, there's different parts of our brain that are like the creative, the writing aspect, and that analytical studying, editing side of things. And I believe that one of the reasons why more people don't actually write posts and don't want to write stories is because they're trying to do both at the same time. And so I had the idea as I was on live, this happens a lot. I don't know if you've noticed this or not. This does happen a lot. I had an idea that I would read to you one of my posts if I can find it. I have been writing a lot of mine online recently, like on notes. 
and a lot of these are just my journal and like we need there i'm not reading my journal to you um oh here we go maybe The whole point of this is knowing that when you start free writing, when you get the ideas out of your head and onto paper, then you're able to actually create good content. And I think that a lot of times we have the belief, maybe this isn't true, let me know if it is, we have the belief that we have to show up in a certain way, that we have to have everything figured out, that it's like, there's like, like, this is really serious, like, I can't, I can't share these things. And I had a client who today shared that she was in a Facebook group and she noticed that like the Facebook group was really negative. Like it was just like negative. It was down. She was like, let me just share something fun. I think I'm just going to share something fun online. And she did. She asked him a question. She asked him a fun question. And she's like, I'm getting like 30 comments a day. Like, I don't really know what to do now. And it's because it was the thought that she had in her head that she put online. When you're free writing, just write down the thoughts that are on in your head. Her, the reason why I couldn't find it, a, a post in my journal was one, because like it's my journal and I've been doing a lot of like processing and emoting. Is that the right word for it? I don't know. Somebody will correct me though if it's not. So I've been doing a lot of processing, but I do the same thing when I'm writing posts is I'll be writing and I take time every Monday morning to free write, to write my content. Every Monday morning, that's what I do. And then I write content for the week. And I literally have a whole module teaching about how I do this, about the fact of like, you do your research. So you kind of have this in the back of your head of what people want and what people are looking for. And then I literally just free write the stories, the things that happen, the things that I talk about, the things that are in my head. And then whatever theme I'm going to go over for the week, I match it with stories. And sometimes the stories don't match up. And so I like put them in a brain dump document. And I use them the next week. Yo, there's like hair in the, like, in my shirt that keeps touching my back. It's driving me crazy. There we go. I have a lot of hair. It's all mine. So free write. This is the first way to figure out what stories you can share online. Okay. And a couple of ideas are these are like, how'd you start your business? Why'd you start your business? What were some obstacles that came up when you were starting your business? What's a challenge you've overcome specifically in your business? What's a revelation you've had recently? What's something new that you can talk about and that you can share on? What are some things that you've discovered? Literally, this doesn't have to be intense either. It doesn't have to be like, figured out my entire life was, you know, crumbling before my eyes and this was happening. No, like I shared a story and I used an analogy about my air vent. For the record, it was glorious last night. I did not sweat. What are some of the things that you can share about? What's something that you've personally overcome or walked through? What's something that you can share that would help someone else? When you free write, you can get it all out on paper or type it. Prefer writing at first. And the reason is it actually helps your brain to be able to see the writing actually like on paper. And then it'll help you write better posts in the future but write all of these. Once you free write, then you can edit it. Okay, but they're not done in the same time. Even though Mondays are my content writing days, I write, edit, and I schedule them out on Mondays. I don't do those all three at once. I write, I go on a walk, I like clear my head. Sometimes I'll do dishes. Sometimes I'll like have a dance party. I'll do something else. And then I edit and then they get scheduled. Okay. So you may be asking at this point, all right, so I'm like writing stories, but like, how do I get to my business? If you'll notice that every story that I share or that I shared with you, there's always a bridge. There's always this bridge that goes from where somebody was to where they want to be. There's always a bridge that goes from the actual story to what's next. And the reason why there's a bridge is because people need to be able to connect it. Sometimes the bridge is like, so that's when I created X. That's how I figured this out. 
it reminded, so when I was working through this, it reminded me of the story. And so this is actually one of my client's stories, but I loved it and I wanted to share it because I think that it illustrates this perfectly because it was a story from a couple of years ago. You've seen some of mine, you can go back on my profile, you can look at how I've done this bridge, but I wanted to share one of hers. She said a couple of years ago, a good friend decided to learn how to swim. I was so excited for her. She told me that I should buy stuff to learn how to swim too. My initial thought, absolutely not. My second thought snapped into being a small child, jumping into a blue blow up pool. I was midair, glanced down and realized I forgot my floaty. I almost drowned that day. To say the water traumatized me would have been an understatement. Back to real life, my friend encouraged me to just try it. I wanted to be able to swim on the beach during vacations, but first I had to be willing to do that hard part and put my fear aside. This line and the next line are the bridge. Have you ever had a goal that felt impossible? Have you ever had a goal where somebody called you out and reminded you of how capable you are? I ended up taking swimming lessons and I loved it. I even inspired my mom to start learning. So my question to you, friend, is what are you choosing to pick? Excuses or progress? She told this story. She even related the story like from a couple of years ago to one as a child jumping in the pool. And then she was reminded of, hey, excuses or progress. You could do the same thing. So this isn't an offer post, obviously, like she's not offering her product or service, but what she is doing is she is showing you and she's building up that belief and rapport. What she's doing is she's getting people a little bit closer to their goal. She's getting people a little bit closer to what they want to do. She's bringing people closer and closer to their next step and inspiring them. She's providing value is what she's doing because when we can provide value, then people are like, oh, I'm in. Like, yes. So then when this client presents her offer, then people subconsciously remember all the times that she was able to help them. So that's what your stories are able to do. They're providing value. They're bringing people closer to their goal. And they're showing them what they can have more of. And so this is why storytelling is so beautiful. This is actually what I have put together in the document for you. Because after you write for 30 minutes, then you get to edit it. Some of the things that you get to do for editing is you're reading through the posts again. So the first step, again, these are really simple steps, okay? I'm not trying to like make this a huge thing. I'm just trying to show you that you can figure out a story, know what the goal is, and then edit it. So you're gonna read through it again. You're gonna know what your goal is for the post. You're gonna know what the hook is. Gotta get people in there. Make sure that you have a first line. I think Kathy asked, do you still have a hook? Yes, you always have a hook. Remember, your hook is what gets people to stop the scroll. This is kind of a side note, but even though you're sharing really good information and you're sharing content, you're sharing um, free value online, especially a lot of you coaches, other people don't owe you anything. I know you paid thousands of dollars to learn this information. I know you spent hours and hours of your time learning this information. But if you go into it and you post with the mindset of being entitled and the fact that people owe you something, they are not going to click. Like they're not going to watch. You still need to have a hook. Next part is, is it written clearly? Ask yourself, is this clearly written? Does it need a call to action? Can you shorten it? Anytime that you can shorten a post, shorten it. It's like... Not every post needs to be long. Have you run it through Grammarly or Hemingway? These are editing apps. If your um, post, this is like a little free nugget for you. If your post is over a sixth grade reading level, nobody's going to understand it. Think about it. You're over here at a 12th grade understanding and reading level. You're at a 12th grade understanding of the concept. You bring it down to like an eighth grade, eighth grade reading level. You like break the information down. When really everybody else is over here at a fourth or a fifth grade understanding concept level. You need to bring it down to a sixth grade or lower 
Tammy told me when she ran her post through Hemingway, she edited a couple times. She's like, I'm at second grade. I'm like, yeah, let's go, Tammy. It was awesome. So this could be another, this is just like another bonus aspect of it. If people are not connecting with what it is that you are sharing, especially you coaches who are selling a service, it could be because you were talking about it from level 10, you brought it down to level eight and people are at a level five or lower. Break it down, make it really, really simple. If your sixth grader could not understand the concept that you're talking about and give it back to you, then it's too complex. Again, remember loafers versus boat shoes? You need to be speaking the same language and it needs to be really simple. And finally, is this focused on the other person? If your post is more focused on you than the other person, then it ain't going to do well. And you may be like, Mary, like, how do I do that with stories? This sounds like an oxymoron. I understand that it kind of sounds like it may be backwards, but your stories are there to serve other people and to show them how they can show up. It's there to inspire them to take action, not for you. If you're just saying like, hey, look at me, this is my amazing vacation. This is awesome. But there's a time and a place for that. That's okay. Social media is meant to be social. But if that's all you're doing with social media, then I would not be surprised if you're not seeing the clients that you want to. Totally your choice, what you want to do. Totally your choice. Now, if you stay till the end, if you're like, I'm here, I showed up, and that was a lot of information for editing, Y'all, I have a link that's going to be shared in the comments for you. you and go ahead and click on this link and you can make a copy of it. Go to file, make a copy. It's Google Doc. Google Docs are amazing if you don't use them. Also, here's another like little mini bonus disclaimer. Um, you don't always need to have like a fancy lead magnet to be able to give people value. I'm walking you through these steps. I'm showing you one aspect of it. A lead magnet wasn't happening today. And I'm okay with that. It doesn't always have to look exactly like everybody else. You can still share value in Google Docs. Can I get an amen? <laughs> now I wanna be able to hear, is this helpful for anybody? Is the things that I shared, has it been helpful? Has, do you believe that you are able to write more posts because of what I've given you. Not only do you have examples of why writing posts is important, but you also have examples of how you can find your own stories. And what I gave you in that doc is how to edit the posts. So I wanna know, is this, do you feel like you were able to take the next steps? I wanna see a yes in the chat. I wanna see a yes in the chat if you believe or no. Like, I really want your honest feedback on if this, you believe that you're able to take the next step. And I'm not saying that all of a sudden you're going to be able to write like a uh, Hemingway and it's just going to be like, oh my gosh, like there's going to be no effort. Like, like it's still going to take effort. But do you believe that with what I told you today that you were able to go to the next step? Just take one step, one step to the next level. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, Emily, you're amazing. Thank you. Carly said, yes. Renee said, it's been helpful. Thank you. My mom put the link in the chat so that you can click it, make a copy. Angela said, yes. Kathy said, yes. Incredible. I'm so glad to hear that it's been helpful because really what you're going to come across next is you're going to continue to build up this arsenal of stories. You're going to continue to build up one of the things that I love doing on my DNA calls is people will tell me wins and they're like, oh, this happened. And I'm like, cool, that can be a story. And they're like, how? I'm like, I'll show you. I'll do this, 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 this. This is how you relate to your business. Here's your story. And they're like, how do you do that? I'm like, I don't know. It just works. But by you doing it a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, no more are you going to feel like you're getting boxed out on social media. I think I need to put these back on. I think I need to just put these back on for the visual. You're not going to feel like you're getting boxed out. You're not going to feel like every time you go to post, get punched in the face. Because as you share stories, people are going to be able to connect. 
There's a saying of a confused buyer never buys. Stories provide clarity for other people. And I would bet that a lot of reason, a lot of the reason why you're not seeing the buyers that you want to see is because you're causing confusion on social media. And so when you're posting, people feel like they're getting hit by your posts because they don't understand what it is and how you'd be able to help them. There is a reason why my tagline is teaching you how to use stories to sell more on social media. Because I know that my six-year-old cousin could explain to me what it is that I do. A lot of people who I talk to, I'm like, I have no idea what you do. I mean, like I do, because we've had a conversation, but just with the sentence and with what you're telling me, I don't know what you do. I don't know how you could help me. And the only reason why we buy is because we believe that other people would be able to help us get closer to their goals. So who has a goal that they're wanting to work more towards? Who has a goal in their business? Maybe you're like, it is June 28th. I don't know where the first six months went of the year. I have some goals I want to hit this year. And I know that they are non-negotiables. I know that because of what I'm doing, I know because of my legacy, I know because of the people who I am destined to meet and to be able to help that I am not settling for anything else. I'm not going to continue to be punched out on social media because that's exactly what's happening to my clients. My clients keep getting punched out by this world. My clients keep getting punched out because of the garbage that's being shared out there right now, because of the garbage that they are believing because that is the loudest voice. Y'all, it fires me up about the garbage that is out on social media right now. And yes, about the world. And there's so much to go into that. But it's also the fact that social media doesn't have to be really difficult. You can share stories. You can connect with people. You can talk. And there are best ways to be able to do things. There are absolutely best ways to be able to do things. Like, I'm going to teach you about DMing people. And don't ask people open-ended questions. Ask people one question at a time. I'm going to teach you how to create things that I call, I have this formula that I call five steps to the perfect post for where you tell a story and then you share, Hey, I have this offer for you comment. and I'm going to send it to you. And then you have conversations with people and some of them are going to want to work with you. Some of them are going to just want more information. You're in the nurturing aspect of it. I'm going to teach you how to be able to show up on live videos confidently. I'm going to teach you how, yes, you can have a ring light. I have a ring light right here, but I also have two beautiful windows so that I can have good lighting. I'm going to teach you how to use photos correctly in your posts, when you should be using photos, what they look like, how to take photos of yourself. Um, I don't, I haven't gotten a professional photo shoot since 2019. But yeah, I always have photos. Majority of the time, I took them myself. I'm going to teach you how to do it. I'm going to teach you how to use social media as the tool that it is and not as a hindrance. I don't want you to keep getting punched out. I don't want you. And it really doesn't matter what I want. It matters what you want. So it's a better question. Do you want to keep getting punched out? Do you want to keep feeling like you're going into a boxing ring every time you try and go on social media and you try and talk about your business or service? If the answer is no, then I have a next step for you. If the answer is yes, if you're okay with it, if you're content with feeling like you're in a boxing ring every time you pick up this phone and go on the app, every time you go on the app on your computer, that's totally fine. I'm so happy that you are here today. I hope that you got some value and I hope that you got something that you could take the next steps on. But if you were done feeling like you were in a boxing ring, I don't want to get my face hit. That's why I don't do boxing ring. I just do like punching bag boxing. Clearly, because that looks like I do punching bag boxing. If you're tired of being in the boxing ring, then I have a next step for you. And at this point, you may be wondering like, how, how do I do this going forward? And is this really going to work for me? Y'all, if your question is, how can I do this going forward? I want you to remember the aspect of you literally learned how to create a story in the past hour and 15 minutes. 
you literally learned how to be able to create stories online. You literally were able to see and watch how you can do that. And if it worked for me, if it worked for veteran companies, if it's worked for fitness coaches, if it's worked for life coaches, y'all literally this worked with a VA company, like literally helping with VA disability benefits, storytelling worked. It worked with a client that I had in the NFT space. Being able to share about NFTs, being able to talk about what's next for them. It worked for my friend Carson, who was able to grow her TikTok to hundreds of people. And I believe she's a couple thousand in, but I don't want to lead y'all wrong. So hundreds of people through sharing stories. And now she has a course that she's going to launch on TikTok. And it works because she started sharing stories online. It worked for my friend who I helped to create content and I helped her to write her content and she made $11,000 on her launch. It worked for Janelle who got two new clients after the last challenge where I shared of how to use storytelling and talking to people in order to get new clients. And I could go on and on and on. It helped for Jess who had a $10,000 launch talking about social media. So let's just say that you're like, okay, Mary, like I'd want to work for you, like work with you, not for me, work, work with you. I think that you could teach me some things about storytelling. Think that you could teach me some things about social media and help me to be able to sell more on social media. Cause that's ultimately my goal. Don't want to be in that boxing ring anymore. I want to get help. Let's just say that it doesn't. Let's just say that like, hey, this doesn't work for you. You follow all the instructions. You go into what I call the portal, which has week by week broken down videos that you can watch or five minute videos. Each one has a worksheet. You're able to go through and do those exercises. Remember how I talked about riding the bike at the beginning? You're able to go through and learn these skills. Let's say you go through all of those. Let's say you show up with the two group calls a week. You get your questions answered. Let's say you do the homework when I say, hey, Here's your next post. Let's say you ask questions in the Facebook group. You send me a message, you get help. Let's just say you do all of that. And for some reason, it doesn't work. Let's just say you don't make your money back that you invested into this. Because ultimately it's like tuition, like college, graduated from college two years ago, did not have a guarantee. I'm going to give you a guarantee. I'm going to give you, I've never done this before, but I'm going to give you a guarantee. Let's just say that you do all of that. You follow the instructions. You show me that you follow the instructions. You're like, Mary, what's going on? If you decide to invest in DNA and it doesn't work for you, I will work with you until you double your investment. Until you're able to come back and be like, I figured it out. I learned the skills. I know that you don't create codependent people. I can do this by myself. I'm good. And so I want to do something this week. I want to do something for the people who are tired of being in that boxing ring, who are tired of just like showing up and feeling like they're getting beat. And so what I'm doing is until midnight Thursday, just the 30th, the last day of June till midnight Thursday, I'm actually offering DNA group coaching for $800 off. And so with that, you get those two group coaches, group coaching calls a week. You get the ability to learn a specific skill and training and to be able to ask questions. You get the ability of the accountability of the group of other people who are a little bit ahead of you to the side of you, and then who are coming after you to be able to have this environment where, you know, other people are working towards their goals too. Cause that's like one of the number one reasons why people don't hit their goals They don't have the accountability and other people around them. You have your weekly action items. The end of almost every single call, I give you an action item. You have this portal where I broke down what it is that you need to do, the videos and the worksheets. And you have a three month commitment for me to be able to work with you. So what I'm doing until midnight Thursday is I'm not offering this for 3,900. 
I'm offering it for 3,100. And I don't normally advertise the price of DNA. I will for social media by design. The reason why I don't normally advertise the price for DNA is because I don't want people to hear the price and then be like, I can't do it. I'm out. But if you're like, I know that I got to get out of the boxing ring. I know that me coaching people is this important. I know that me taking the next step, me helping people is this important. I want to figure it out and send me a message. I want you to take the first step. Normally I have people comment and then I'll like go and I'll send you a message, but I want you to take the first step because I believe that that's more important because you are saying to yourself that I'm willing to show up. I'm willing to figure this out. I'm willing to get my next steps. And so until midnight Thursday, offering for $800 off and doing a bonus one-on-one -on -one call with you. Do a 45 minute call to help you get started quickly. Help you take action, figure out where do you need to focus your time? Then let's do that. Because I believe that storytelling is this important. Believe that what you have to offer is this important. So two things. One, if you haven't already grabbed the link to your storytelling on social media, grab the link, use this resource, make a copy of it. Use it. That's why I gave it to you. It has ideas for posts. It has ideas for editing. And the second thing is, if you're ready to join DNA, if you're ready to step into that next level, I told you stories about Brian and about David, who's able to crush the NFT space. I told you stories about Carson, who now has hundreds of followers on TikTok. About Janelle, who got two new clients. About Jess. If you're ready to take that next step and send me a message, I would love to be able to talk to you, build work together, see what your next step is. If you have any more questions, put them in this video. would love to be able to hear what you have and what you're offering and what your questions you have. All right. I love you. Thank you for joining me and I will talk to you later.